What is the definition of delay in forensic schedule analysis? Delay simply means a state of extended duration of an activity, or a state of an activity not having started or finished on time. First point is distinguishing activity level variance from project level variance. A. Activity level variance. Forensic delay analysis primarily focuses on determining start or duration variances of a specific schedule activity otherwise known activity level variances. Activity level variances are the result of several types of delay causes, waiting, delayed start, performance, productivity impacts, additional work, etc. Interruption, work stoppage, weather, strikes etc. Given these variations there are two main ways in which activity level variances are expressed in a CPM schedule. I. Delayed relative start. 2. Extended duration. B. Project level variance. Project level variance is also a variance but at the overall project level. While the activity level variances occur close in time to the causes, that is in the same period. The project level variance may be months apart from the actual cause. S of the delay project level variance is the result of the aggregation of activity level variances after taking into account network float. Activity level variances are considered delays regardless of the amount of float they carry. The activity experiences a delay if an activity level variance exists regardless if the delay affects the project completion date, that is the project level variance. Second point is distinguishing delay cause from delay effect. It is important for the analyst to be able to distinguish the cause of delay from the resulting effect. For example, a fully updated schedule may show extended activities and delayed start of activities relative to their controlling predecessors. While the cause may not be apparent, a competent statusing of the schedule will show the delay effects. What caused the initial activity level variance for the chain of activities often does not appear on the schedule but must be investigated and researched using project documents, data and witness interviews. If on the other hand, a delay was appropriately inserted into the schedule as a new activity as a predecessor to the activity with the start delay. The cause of the activity level variance is readily apparent. The identification of delay causes is a focus in the latter phases of delay analysis, during causation analysis. Third point about delay characterization is independent of responsibility. Activity level variances are considered delays independent of the responsibility for those variances. Thus an activity level variance can be contractor caused or owner caused, but it is still a delay. Similarly, the characterization of delays as excusable, compensable, concurrent and paced are attributes that are assigned well after the initial delay analysis starts by examining activity level variances based on the causation analysis that has been performed after the schedule analysis is completed. There are two fundamentally different methods for quantifying delayed durations. A variance method the variance method is a comparative method that determines the delay duration by computing the activity level variance between the as-built activity duration and the impacted or planned activity duration obtained from the baseline schedule. An updated schedule or other non qfm sources such as a measure at mill analysis or some reasoned estimate. This method is purely mathematical in nature. Two figures, a planned and an actual, are subtracted from each other to compute the variance. These two figures may be dates, durations, or productivity measurements. Thus, the entire variance needs to be tied to one or more causes for the variance. B. Independent method. In contrast, the independent method is not comparative. 
The delayed oration is determined from project documentation that contemporaneously chronicled or otherwise recorded the occurrence of the delay, or quantified the impact resulting from a delay event. Under this method, the answer to the question whether causation has been established or not depends on the type and content of the documentation that was used for the quantification. For example, suppose that the activity level variance for a specific activity is 10 days. In the variance method, the entire 10 days will be distributed among the responsible parties. However, in the However, in the independent method, the activity level variance is not even looked at in the beginning. Instead, the analyst researches project documentation to determine the delay amount. Therefore, if the project documents that the activity was delayed three days by an event, the remaining seven days of the activity level variance will not be assigned to this delay and may not be assigned to the party responsible for this delay. If the documentation states the delay event was 12 days, the analyst will consider the delay to the activity was 12 days. But since the activity level variance is 10, the other two days may have been made up via acceleration. Therefore, in the variance method, the analyst is guided to the delay amount by the amount of activity level variance. On the other hand, in the independent method, the analyst does not review the activity level variance, but relies on what is written in the documentation to make its determination of delay amount. Assigning or assuming variance responsibility. When the forensic schedule analyst does not possess adequate information to make an independent determination of responsibility for the delay, the analyst may delay. The analyst may have to proceed with the analysis based on an assumption. Such assumptions should be noted and clearly stated as part of the final analysis product along with the basis of such assumption. Contractor delay is any delay event caused by the contractor or those under its control, or the risk of which has been assigned solely to the contractor. Typical examples of contractor delay events include, but are not limited to, Delays caused by rework resulting from poor workmanship, subcontractor delays, insufficient labor, management and coordination problems, failure to order necessary materials and failure to secure contractual approvals. Owner delay is any delay event caused by the owner, or the risk of which has been assigned solely to the owner. Examples of owner delay events include, but are not limited to. Delays resulting from change orders, extended submittal review, directed suspension of work, delayed owner furnished equipment, differing site conditions, and defective contract documents. Force majeure delay is any delay event caused by something or someone other than the owner, including its agents, or the contractor, or its agents, or the risk of which has not been assigned solely to the owner or the contractor by contract language and or local industry custom and practice. Examples of force majeure delays include, but are not limited to, delays caused by acts of God, inclement weather, acts of war, extraordinary economic disruptions, strikes, and other events not foreseeable at the time of contract. Many contracts specifically define force majeure events. Although strictly not a force majeure event, delays caused by parties external to the contract may also be classified under this category. If there are no contractual risk assignment to the contractor or the owner for such delays, 